Hello, you are probably watching this video right now because you're learning or interested in making a deck for cardistry. I've noticed that there's not really a tutorial for this whole process, so uh, I've kind of just broken it down to the most basic stuff that you need to know when making a deck for cardistry. I'll go over designing, making prototypes, and then taking it all the way and getting it printed by a major card company. I hope you find what I say useful. Uh, I will link my uh, personal design works in the description so you can see if you're interested. But yeah, let's get right into how to make a deck for cardistry. Alrighty, so uh, before we get into opening Illustrator and stuff, you're going to want to make sure you have those uh, two templates that I've linked in the first timestamp of the video downloaded. One's going to be a standard template and one's going to be a make playing cards template. I'll explain later why uh, we need two different ones for making cards. But once you have those downloaded, you're going to go ahead and open up Illustrator. Once you have Illustrator open, you just want to go to File, New from Template, go to Downloads, and just go ahead and open the standard template. It will open up with this screen here. So as you can see, you have the deck lines already laid out for you. The dimensions of these deck lines are to match a United States Playing Card Company. That's pretty much the standard dimensions though that you're going to see throughout all the companies that I will mention later. So this is just the best template to do all the artwork in. And then the Make Playing Cards template will be for exporting the artwork in the Make Playing Cards dimensions because those are different. So once you have this open, you're going to go ahead and lock the uh, deck lines layer, okay, and just add a new layer. Uh, you want to make sure all of your layers go underneath the deck lines because you want to be able to turn off and on the visibility of the deck lines around your artwork. Now, I can't really explain to you how to make a design, but I can just give you some good rules of thumb to maybe consider when conceptualizing a design. There's usually three different design types. There's a one-way, a two-way, and a 52 different backed, right? So I'll go ahead and show some of my own designs. This would be considered a one-way design. This is the ADJUX recolored V1 edition. Uh, these are still unreleased, but just to show you this uh, design, when in the deck, if I was to flip this uh, card over 180 degrees the design would look different it would look inverse to what you are seeing now so this is what we would consider a one-way design uh, we also have here a two-way design this is a personal deck I've made uh, no affiliate to any company um, but as you can see it is a mirrored uh, design so if I was to turn over this card in the deck, it wouldn't matter. It would look the same throughout the entire deck. And finally, here's a 52 different back deck. Uh, I'm not gonna show everything in this deck, but just to show you that it genuinely has different designs. Uh, hopefully, if you're making a 52 different back deck, all the designs complement one another in the deck so that you get the most appealing looking designs. After you make your initial back design, you can keep adding layers as you can see, I've done that over here. And each layer can contain different pieces of artwork. So as you can see, they're all different. I have all of the face cards and the back design as well as the jokers all in one file. Make sure that you're using the lock and the view buttons to mark off which ones that you still need to work on versus the ones that you have worked on. I usually, after I get done with the design, I'll lock it. So that's why you see all the designs are locked here because I am done with them and I've unlocked the back design so I can show you guys it now. All right, so now that you have worked in this main template and made a design that you fancy, you are going to open up the make playing cards template. You're gonna do the same exact thing before, file, new from template, but except this time you're just going to select the make playing cards template that I have provided for you. As you can see, this has only one line on it. This line is just to represent the edge of the card. So um, you can add an extra rectangle if you'd like to represent the border, but hopefully you kind of know what you want from the border based off of the design that you've made in the other template. So just go ahead and select the second layer here. This is gonna be the pasting layer. 
uh, and just on the main artwork, you're going to just control A, control C, copy all of the artwork and paste it. So control V into this layer. Now, when you paste this over, as you can see, it's a lot smaller than it is on this uh, template because like I said earlier, the make playing cards uh, template has its own dimensions. So uh, we need to boost the image of the design. So uh, I'll just do that right now. Good way to do that is just to find where you want the design to be in the corner and just to hold shift, drag it out. Now it probably won't be center, but how you center stuff in Illustrator, if you don't know, is these little controls up here. You're gonna want to go to align to horizontal and then align vertical. Now your artwork is completely centered. So you're gonna wanna export all of the artwork in the uh, formats that I'm listing on the screen right now. These are all the ones that uh, make playing cards accept. Now, personally, I think I have the weirdest process when it comes to exporting the artwork for make playing card decks. So um, I'm sure there is a way easier process out there, but you're stuck learning how I do it. So this is how I do it. You're gonna go ahead and turn off the visibility of the outline layer um, and go to file, export, save for web legacy. Now, before you export, you just wanna make sure that it's in a JPEG and that the percent down here, right? This is the image size is at 500. So once you do that, you're just going to save the uh, image wherever you want. Hopefully you have a designated folder for all these designs because you're going to need to do this uh, 56 different times. So try to keep organized. Uh, I'm not gonna save this here, but just to show you what mine look like, as you can see, I have the back design here for this deck. And then these are all the faces. I've labeled them club, diamonds, hearts, spades. Just to show, you can see all the spades in here. So yeah, just try to be organized when exporting this stuff because uh, it's really hard to scramble all over your computer to find all this stuff later. So once you have all the designs exported and you're ready to put them into make playing cards, you're gonna just go to makeplayingcards.com now uh the site is a little hard to navigate so that's what i'm going to be explaining to you now usually you can select the uh, cards that you want to use right here on the front page but depending on how the site looks when you're watching this it may not be there so just go ahead and go to playing cards start your design you're going to want a uh, custom blank cards so the far right option so it's going to show you a lot of different sizes here uh, the size that we're looking for for a standard cardistry deck is going to be a poker size. A good way to see it just by scrolling is these little ribbons here. You can see they're all colored, right? And the poker size is usually always the gray ribbon. Make sure that you uh, choose this one where you can see you can add the design to both sides of the deck. Uh, you can have the border or the black border uh, if you fancy, but Personally, I think that this is just the best because hopefully you already have all the artwork filled out. All of this is really subjective because you may enjoy some different stocks and different finishes that MPC has to offer, but I'm just gonna show you my standard one that I always do when I make prototypes. Personally, I like going with the M31 linen, then I like the beta finish, and then I always put it in a plain white tuck box. Uh, there we go. And then once you have all that, you can just go ahead and click on start your design. Depending on if you had a uh, 52 different back or a one way, two way, you may want the back designs to all have one image or to have a different image. Uh, like I said, just depends on the deck you're trying to make. The back can depend, but make sure that the faces you select that they're different images because obviously you need to put all the suits and stuff. I'll just click on same images for now. All right, so once you're on this window, you're gonna wanna go to upload images and uh, you're just gonna wanna select the back design for in this case, because I usually do the back design first and then the face cards, but it doesn't really matter. You could do face cards first, then back design. So just wait for that to load. 
All right, once the design is fully uploaded into the image box, you're just gonna drag it onto the little template they have for you. And uh, depending on if you like how this looks or not, you may wanna go back into the Illustrator template and tweak some things. Uh, I think the template is good enough. It will work with most designs, but some designs are a little tricky and Make Playing Cards doesn't have the best website for uploading designs. so. You may have to adjust some things, but for the most part, I would say that the template works for most designs. Once you have your back design in, you're just gonna hit next step. Uh, it's gonna ask you to put like some text on here. You don't wanna do that. Just go next step. Now this is where I told you, you're going to need to put different images because you need to now upload every single face card that you uh, need in the deck. And it's the same process with the back design. Once you upload them here, you just drag them accordingly, depending on the order that you want the cards to be in. So once you have the deck in your cart, you can go ahead and check out. Now, uh, some things that you should know before you go ahead and buy the deck is that uh, make playing cards, as you can see, it says 16 right here, but depending on where you live, the shipping is usually more than the single deck price. The good thing about Make Playing Cards though is that they have a flat standard fee depending on where you live. So the more decks you buy, the cheaper it is. But if you're only buying one deck, it's gonna average out to be like 35 bucks and it will take anywhere from a week to two weeks to finally get the cards in the mail. So once you finally put your order in to make playing cards and you get the decks, uh, the first thing that you're gonna need to do before you even consider printing the deck is make content. I cannot stress this enough. You and your friends may find the deck to be really good looking, but once you introduce it to the community, they may have a different reaction towards it. So just to know that you're not wasting your own time, I would really recommend that you make a lot of content just to see how people in your Instagram feed are reacting to the deck and to gauge whether or not people would even be interested in buying it. But let's say that you do have a deck that people are interested in buying and that has a really nice design. How do you go about printing it? Well, I've linked a bunch of contacts for the biggest card printing companies in the community. This is something that you will have to evaluate yourself because Different companies charge different things for decks and depending on the type of deck that you've made, some may cost more or less in the final cost. So if I was you, I would just start experimenting with different decks. Buy decks from different companies, see how they handle, see if there's something to enjoy there about the handling and if you would want your deck to handle just like that. Once you find a company that you really fancy, go ahead and contact them with the contact list I've provided. But I would say a good rule of thumb is to at least have a few thousand dollars saved up so that you'll be ready to hear their offer and you know, go ahead and start printing your deck. Now, if saving up a few thousand dollars isn't something that you particularly want to do, you can make a Kickstarter and have the community fund your deck. However, the only downside I would say to Kickstarter is that it's really hard to make a profit on the deck after they've been printed because the people who really wanted the deck bought it during the Kickstarter. The only way I see people making money through Kickstarter is by overfunding. So uh, if you get overfunded, then great. But Kickstarter usually with most projects only gives you the bare minimum amount that you need to print the deck. So let's say now you've printed the deck with a certain card company and you want to give the cards to the community. Well, there are three main shipping methods that the community uses to get their decks out there. You can either go through Gambler's Warehouse, they will uh, charge you an extra amount of money to ship all the decks for you, or you can go with Art of Play, who will have you implement their shipping cost into your product. And finally, you can just buy a bunch of bubble wrap and envelopes and make a pirate ship account and ship them all yourself. One isn't necessarily better than the other. It just kind of depends on your workflow, how much time you have on your hands, uh, you know, how you want your business structure to be. So yeah, I hope I have provided enough information for you to go out and make your own deck. Please tag me and DM me if you do make a deck using this tutorial, I'd love to see it give you maybe some critiques or anything. But yeah, thanks guys for watching. I've been really enjoying making these videos and stuff, so I plan on keeping them coming. 
please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.